So y'all know what's coming right now. Y'all know what's coming right now, right? Uh, my life turns kids. Only one person wants me to do louder. Good morning, Life Church kids. Louder. Good morning, Life Church kids. Louder. Good morning, Life Church kids. Louder. Should we turn it all the way up? Yeah. Good morning, Life Church kids. So here's what happened. Now, Darius 
If the Bible says in Daniel 6, if those of you who have your Bibles, if you want to turn to Daniel 6, Daniel chapter 6, I'm going to go grab my Bible too, even though I've got it on my phone. Daniel's in the Old Testament, and it's after Psalms, so it's past the middle of the Bible. But if you need to look it up, look it up in the front, and you'll look for the, if you go to the table of contents, which is in the front of your Bible, and it's going to list all the books in the Bible. And in the Old Testament, you'll find Daniel, and it'll tell you what page it's on. And you turn to that page in your Bible. And then you go down to the sixth chapter of Daniel. Now let me read this to you while you guys are looking. Let me read this to you. It pleased Darius to set over the kingdom 120 satraps to be over the whole kingdom. And over these three governors, of whom Daniel was one, that the satraps may give an account to them so the king would suffer no loss. Then this Daniel distinguished himself above the governors and the satraps because an excellent spirit was in him, and the king gave thought to setting him over the whole realm. So here's what the king did. The king set over his kingdom 120 governors. Uh, uh, let me call them deputies. The Bible calls them, again, let me see if I can spell this, deputy. Deputies, 120 deputies, and three governors over the over the 120 deputies, and Daniel was one of those three governors. And because Daniel obeyed God, and Daniel was faithful in everything that he did, God made sure that Daniel became honored. And the king, he began to see, hey, Daniel's going to do a real good job for me. And he promoted him. He, over all the three governors that were above the deputies, he said, Daniel's my guy. In fact, I think I'm going to make Daniel second in charge of the kingdom after me. Now, you know what happens when you succeed? People get Let me jealous. ask you this. How many kids in this class get A's in school all the time? Not all the time, but I'm, I'm looking for the ones that get A's all the time. You ever have kids get mad at you because you get A's? Yeah? Yeah? Okay, can I, can I have a confession? Can I give you a confession here? Can I tell you something about me? I was one of those kids in school that everybody hated because I would get A's all the time without trying. That's, that was me. I was the guy that everybody hated. And everybody was trying to get me in trouble because I would always get A's. They'd try to trick me. They'd try to do things. And if I ever got a B, yeah, I did get a B, ha <laughs> ha, I did get a B. Now, you may see this in school, but when you get out in, when you grow up and you, you go out to work and you find that you're doing well and the king likes you or the boss likes you more than anybody else, there's going to be people that are going to get mad at you. They're going to be jealous of you and they're going to try to do everything they can to tear you down. And that's what they did to Daniel. You see, Daniel was faithful to God, and God made sure that Daniel succeeded in whatever he did. And the king found favor in Daniel. He said, Daniel is my guy. I'm going to put Daniel over everybody. I'm going to make Daniel second only to me. And these guys said, we can't have that. We don't want Daniel there. So they looked for things that they could trip him up. Things that they could find fault in Daniel. And they couldn't find anything. You know why? Because Daniel served God. Listen. You all go to school. If you do your schoolwork like you're doing it for God, 
you're going to do your best job possible, right? If you do your job, your job is school. Your job is learning. If you do your job like you were doing it for God, not for the teacher, not even for yourself, if you do everything that you do for God, you're going to do your best, aren't you? Because God deserves our best. And so Daniel did. Everything that Daniel did, he was doing for God. And so he did his best. And God made sure that he got promoted. And they got mad. So they tried to find things to, oh, maybe Daniel did this wrong. Or maybe Daniel did, maybe Daniel's stealing over here. Or maybe Daniel's doing something wrong over here. And they couldn't find anything. They couldn't find anything wrong with Daniel. And so, who's got a Bible and wants to read? Okay, I got Kaya. Kaya in the sixth chapter of Daniel. And starting, I want you to read verses four and five. Read it real loud. But the other two leaders and the royal rulers heard about it. So they took him for a reason to bring the charges against Daniel. They tried to find something wrong with the way he ran the government, but they weren't able to. They couldn't find any fault with his work. He could be, he could always be trusted.
You know what would happen? You would die. Because the king said so. But that's not fair! So what? The king says so. Favor, I want you to give up your house and go move somewhere else. But, but, but I've always lived in the house. So the king said so. That's the kind of power that the king had. And so the king, because of having all that power, the king starts thinking, hmm, I can do whatever I want, and I can do it whenever I want to do it. Nobody can go against me. And he started thinking, hey, I'm a big important guy. He started thinking, I'm a big, important guy. Nebuchadnezzar had this problem too. And so they tried to appeal to his, what they call vanity. They tried to get him, hey, king, we got some. We're going to make a statue of you, and everybody has to bow down to the statue of you. And he said, hmm, you know what? I'm the king. That's pretty cool. Well, that's, yeah, that's what Nebuchadnezzar, and that's what I'm talking about, actually. They said, Nebuchadnezzar, why don't we make a statue of you? And he said, hmm, yeah, a statue of me. And everybody has to bow down and worship my statue. How cool is that? And we all know, we, if those of you who were here last week, you, you remember how that turned out, right? Darius had the same problem. And they came to Darius and they said, hey, Darius, you know, you're the king. You're a pretty cool guy. Why don't we make a law? And see, now, Darius was from a different country as Nebuchadnezzar. And they had a law in Darius's country that once you made a law, you couldn't change it. Nobody could change the law. Once it was made, you can't change the law anymore. Even the king could not change the law. And so they said, why don't we make this law if that nobody can pray to anybody, to any God, or ask anything of anybody except you, king. So what you're saying is, they can't pray to anybody except me. They can only ask me for things. How cool would that be? Yeah, let's do this. And anybody who, try, anybody who disobeys the law is going to get thrown into the den of lions. Why do you think they did that? You think so? 
Who had their who else had their hand up? Is that you? The Bible says, when Daniel heard that that law had been passed, he went home and he opened up his windows and he stood in front of the window and prayed to God. No, no, Daniel. He opened up his windows and he prayed to God in front so everybody could see. In other words, he was defying the law. He said the law of God is more important than the law of man. Now, he knew that he had been thrown into the lion's den. He didn't care. You know why? Because he knew that God is greater. God would protect him. So when they... Now, you know all the guys who passed the law, they were gathered around Daniel's house to see what he would do. And he opened his windows and he began to pray to his God. They go, ah, look, Daniel's praying. Daniel's not praying to the king. And they ran to the king. Hey, king, Daniel's not praying to you. The law says that Daniel has to pray to only you. And he's not. And the king knew he made a mistake. He realized right then that that law was passed so they could get Daniel. He tried to get out of it. And they said, uh-uh, you can't change the law, king. The, king. the law says that he has to be thrown into the lion's den and you can't change it. All right. Bring Daniel. I'm sure he was all apologetic to Daniel because he liked Daniel. He found Daniel to be an honorable servant. He said, Daniel, we got to throw you into the lion's den. The law says so. We don't have a choice. Now, Daniel knew that. He didn't care. They, they thought they had Daniel. They figured as soon as Daniel would get thrown into the lion's den, that would be the end of him. Because lions eat people. They do. They eat people. And so the king was all apologetic. He said, as they were getting ready to throw Daniel in, he said, Daniel, I know that your God is going to protect you. And I'm sure he's going, oh, please. Daniel's God, please protect him. Daniel's God, please protect him. And the Bible says that all night that night, he wouldn't eat. He couldn't sleep. He sat up praying all night. And in the morning, first thing he did when it was first morning, he ran down to that lion's den. And he called out, Daniel, did your God protect you? Put yourself in the king's position. You just condemned a man to die that you didn't want to die. He got thrown into the lion's den. And lions don't take very kindly to people when they're hungry. All of a sudden, a voice comes back. O oh, king, live forever. My God has shut the mouths of the lions. And the king was glad. He ordered his men, get Daniel up out of the lion's he got thrown into the lion's den just as the law said. The law was fulfilled. He ordered them to get Daniel out of that lion's den. And then he said, you find all the people that had got me to pass that law. Get them and get their families. Get their wives. Get their parents. Get their children and bring them to me. And all of them got thrown into the lion's den. Now you thought, well, maybe the lions weren't hungry. The, the Bible says that the lions tore them apart even before they got to the floor of the lion's den. That's how hungry they were. So it was no fluke. God protected Daniel. If you serve God, if you do your best for God, no matter what you do, there may be people. Now, some people will say, that's great. I, I support you. 
It's wonderful that you're obeying God. I wish I could obey God like you do. Some people will be like that. Other people will be mad at you and they'll do anything they can to tear you down. But don't be afraid because the God that you serve is stronger than anything that anyone can do against you. God will protect you always. God will protect you always. All right, let's bow our heads and pray. Father, we thank you because you are a God of protection and you are a faithful God. Lord, you never abandon us and you never let us down. Father, I pray that this word would get into the hearts of these children, that they would come to depend on you, that they would know that they can rely on you. And we give you all the praise and the glory for it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.